as we're getting ready for the wild card weekend. Baldy joins you here in the nation, and a good evening, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm here at the uh, Orlando getting ready for the hula ball on Saturday, so I'm just kind of getting my prep done and meeting these kids and coaches and scouts and all this kind of stuff here, so it's good. I was wondering where you were and, and if you, you could tell us uh, how it's been in Philadelphia this week. Are, are we looking for optimism or are we complaining? What's uh, what's going on as the Eagles enter the bye week there with the with the uh, city? You know, I mean, the sky's falling and people are trying to uh, figure out, like, can they get themselves out of this downward spiral and what could happen if they lose? What happens if they win? Uh, there are a lot of question marks. Not a lot of answers right now. I think you've got to wait and kind of find out Monday night what happens. I mean, that is the most unimaginative offense left standing in the playoffs, correct? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's pretty well documented that, you know, defensive players on the other side are calling out plays before they happen. So, I mean, when that starts happening, I mean, it's a little, uh, you know, it's a little predictable at this point. How real is uh, Nick Sirianni now in danger of losing that job? I don't know. I mean, that's uh, that'd be Mr. Lori's decision. Uh, I don't, you know, he hasn't spoken to it, but uh, I would think that, you know, like a lot of places, Jacksonville, Chicago places uh, where things didn't work out like they were hoping they would, that, uh, you know, coordinators have gotten fired. Um, I think that would be at the very least at this, at this point right now, even if they win the game, I think you're looking at, you know, major changes on the coaching staff, whether it involves Nick or not, I don't know, but they have they had moved on two years after Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl, yeah. and things went south real quick. And you know they got him, got rid of him and the quarterback pretty quick. So it's, it seemed like the OC Brian Johnson, like everybody was singing his praises a year ago, like this was the hot OC. Was he just not ready for that step up? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just it just you know it, uh, Brian was very well respected here, and he was the quarterback coach last year. I do think they miss Shane Steichen a great deal and some of the creativity and imagination that he brought to the offense. Uh, I have had certain players of the team kind of echo that to me, but I don't want to take anything away from what Brian is or not doing. I mean, they're not playing well uh, as a group, and that isn't always just coaching. Sometimes it's just players not playing well. Baldy, which fan base should be more worried about the running game uh, on defense, the Packers or the Cowboys? I, if I was, uh, I would say the Cowboys should be more worried about Green Bay's running game simply because of how Aaron Jones is running the ball right now. Um, nobody has run for more yards over the last three weeks than Aaron Jones. And I've known Aaron a long time since he came into this league. Knew him when he was at Texas El Paso. And this is as good as he's looked, period. I mean, he's, he doesn't miss a hole. He's running through contact. He just looks really fresh right now. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. missed four or five weeks in the middle of the season. But his legs just look fresh right now. And, um, you know, if I was the Cowboys and the troubles they've had against certain runners this year, I would be, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd certainly be concerned at this point. What's your scouting report on Jordan Love? Well, there's nothing not to like about him. It's just amazing how quickly this is all coming about with so many young players in that offense. But there's no throw he can't make, and he can throw it off any platform. Uh, he's very poised. His movement is uh, its really the conservation of movement. He doesn't overstride. He doesn't overstep. He doesn't panic. He just has this ability to be able to parry a punch, slip a block, um, find an open space. Sometimes it's just backing up a few steps. He just has a great feel for the pocket and how to deliver football. And his, his arm is... Is you know, it's everything that we thought it was coming out of Utah State, you know, four years ago. He's got an electric arm that's very accurate. After Aaron Jones, who do you feel like is the playmaker that most needs to be stopped on this Packers offense? I would probably say Jaden Reed. You know, the second year, you know, know, second round pick this year. I mean, he's a big kid that runs really well. They hand it off to him. Um, They they put him in a slot. He can be a guy that uncovers when there's a scramble drill. I mean, he looks like, you know, nothing against Romeo Dobbs or uh, Dentavious Wicks or if Christian Watson comes by, comes back this week. But I would say Jaden Reed, number 11, is the guy that I'd be most concerned about. For the Cowboys, do you think there's any way that the Packers can take C.D. Lamb out of the game, or can any team right now eliminate C.D. Lamb? 
Well, I mean, you saw it against Miami. He kind of went invisible for two, two you know, for two quarters. Yeah. Against, it's not like they weren't looking at him. There was, you know, there was uh, offense line issues in that day, and you know, Dak was scrambling, and you know, I'm sure there were still plays called for him. They just didn't get in the ball. Um, so that has happened. But it, to answer your question, I don't think there's any particular player or scheme that can stop CD right now. They put him in the backfield. They hand it off to him. They put him in motion. They put him in the slot, left side, right side. Um, I don't think there's any scheme bracket. Uh, particular J, you know Jair Alexander. I don't think anybody can shut CD Lamb out, down right now. Yeah, Brian Baldinger is with us. Insider calls are brought to you by Old Spice Gentleman's Blend Body Wash, providing exfoliation plus twenty four seven moisturization because men have skin too. Okay, how much of a threat is this Rams group to to win this week to to go all the way? Could they beat the Niners? Um, how 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 much respect do you have for what LA is bringing to the table here? Well, they put Carson Wentz and the backup running back on the field last week against San Francisco's number one defense, and they went right down the field and scored. Puka Nakua beat Traverius Ward in the slot, and Carson dropped a dime, and it was seven. You know, they scored a touchdown the opening drive, and then the 49ers started taking the guys out. I mean, they're as formidable as any team in this whole playoffs right now. Um, their running back, uh, Kyron Williams, right now led the National Football League in yards per game rushing at 95 yards a game. Um, so they're, they're, um, they're formidable. And defensively, all these, you know, rookies, Kobe Bryant and, you know, all these kids young and Bobby Brown, all these young kids, like they've all kind of uh, gotten better. They've done a good job of coaching them up, and it's a good defense. Uh, I think they're, they're as dangerous as any team in the whole playoffs, to be honest with you. Baldy, the we saw a bunch of coaching changes yesterday. You know, especially you know with with Bill Belichick today. You know, in parting ways, Pete Carroll was there. Were you were you surprised, or did you feel like though this was something that maybe we saw coming uh, uh, down the down the road? I thought that Seattle surprised me because I thought Seattle was still competitive defensively. Didn't play well. Um, this year, they had a ton of injuries in the offense line. You can make excuses why nine and eight wasn't good enough, um, but I, I didn't think it was because of coaching. So that surprised me. Um, it didn't surprise me in New England because they were just awful. Yeah, uh, you know, they were. It was a, it's a bad product. You know, they didn't score a touchdown in the last two weeks. That games where they were shut out this year. I mean, the offense is awful and it's a bad product. And so it's not. I mean, look, Bill Belichick is part of it, but, you know, nobody wants to, you know, you can't stain his resume. I mean, it's it's untouchable. But everybody, I mean, I, I played for Tom Landry. I mean, we were terrible at the end. Sure. You know, in 87, 88, you know, we were awful. And so um, it, it was time for change. I, I think Bill can still coach. But I think sometimes change is just good, you know. Uh, sometimes it's just good to leave one place and take your expertise and your prowess, take it someplace else and, I won't be surprised if Bill Belichick, you know, uh, uh, is coaching someplace else next year. But I think it's the change is good for Bill. I think it's change, good. Uh, change is good for the Patriots. It didn't catch me off guard though that they made the decision. Baldy, the, the you mentioned about Coach Landry and stuff, and I remember you know kind of being a fan and watching the team at the end. There's a lot of similarities to what happened with the Patriots and what happened with the Cowboys at the end, right? With some of the the roster building and things like that. Yeah. Yep. It just Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, we had some bad drafts. Uh, you know, in 88, they drafted Michael Irvin. Yeah. Um, and he, got, he broke his ankle that year. He really didn't play much. Um, but, you know, within the, the team that was slipping, the, the, the drafts were bad. Kevin Brooks was a bad pick. I mean, I'm not going to pick on guys that were taken. But they, they sure. made some bad selections. Yeah. Uh, Rod Hill. I mean, it was, like, it was building. Uh, they weren't hitting the number one draft picks at all. Um, you know, and, and so that, that part of it was, was part of the downfall. But, you know, within that, you know, there was still, you know, Mark Tune and Kevin Gogan. There was building blocks to building a really strong offensive line when Troy came in. And so, you know, you know, and then Jimmy, you know, did his magic in the trades and everything he did. But I thought that outside of drafting Stepnowski, most of the line was already there. Obviously, we're uh, worried about Dan Quinn and, and maybe where he goes. In your opinion, what is the most attractive job out of the openings right now? Is it as simple as, will the Chargers have Justin Herbert and that's the one with the quarterback? Well, um, 
I think Atlanta could be attractive if they could get the quarterback situation figured out. Their defense was top 10 this year. And, you know, they've got some young playmakers all drafted in the top 10 for literally three years in a row. And so whether it's Pitts or Drake London or Bijan, I mean, they've got legitimate in the offense line is good. They got a pro bowl right guard there. That was very in, in Lindstrom. That was very deserving. Uh, they've got a good, they've got a lot of good building pieces uh, in Atlanta. That could be good. Uh, I don't think see, Seattle is very far away. They had actually drafted pretty well. Um, they had a lot of injuries in the offense line and the running back got hurt. And, but I don't think Seattle's very far away. They, they were very competitive with San Francisco uh, in a playoff loss last year. Uh, I don't think Seattle's very far away. Brian Baldinger with us here in the G-Bag Nation. All right, Baldy, uh, for the Super Wild Card Weekend, if you had to put your nuts on the line, guaranteed one stone-cold lead pipe lock victory of the week, who are you going with? Mm, I'd probably take Cleveland. I'd take, I'd take Cleveland just because I think of their ability to defend and how good they are defensively. They're very good, and um, they're, they're reasonably healthy. I, I, I hear some things about Denzel Ward, I'm not sure, mm. um, but they're, they're very good. And they have been that way. And Jim Schwartz is a very, very good defensive coordinator. So I think, and then I think even if Joe Flacco turns it over, I think they're good enough to overcome that right now. And so uh, they, they look like a dangerous squad to me. Which game is the most intriguing to you right now? Which one are you most pumped about? Probably the Dallas-Green Bay game. I think I'm really excited about that one. Uh, I am about, about Miami-Kansas City. I just don't know how that weather is going to affect the game and how well it's going to be played in those kind of conditions. Um, so that one's a little bit off. I, I kind of want to see what Pittsburgh does against Buffalo, although I don't expect them to, to beat Buffalo. Uh, but I think Green Bay and Dallas just, you know, has just because of, I believe the, the, the spotlight that Dak is under right now at this stage of his career and the team that's around him, I think it's a good team. And, but you know, they got to go take care of business and, yeah, I think Green Bay is ahead of schedule as far as kind of building this thing, but it's a credit. Matt LaFleur is one heck of a good coach, and you can tell by all these young kids that are really flourishing and how well they run the ball and how they run the ball. It's very diverse, and so I think they're well coached, and I think they'll be a, you know, a good opponent on Sunday afternoon. They're saying it's a minus 30 uh, wind chill in, in Kansas City. At what point does the excitement about being in the playoffs like go away and you're just freezing your balls off, Baldy? Uh, well, uh, you, it's a mindset. It's, it's certainly a mindset. Not everybody has it, you know, not everybody can, you know, block it all out. So it, it can go away for some guys. Some guys can overcome it. They can just play it like it's just a, another game and they're prepared and mentally they're strong. And then, you know, sometimes like, it's just, it looks bad and some guys just can't adjust to those kind of conditions. Is there a temperature in which Baldy would say, okay, we can go ahead and wear some sleeves as a as a trench player, or is that just I, never I, the I, right I, thing? I, I played in below thirty. You know, I grew up in Minnesota. Um, I, uh, I I played in thirty plus below zero weather on a couple of occasions. I never put sleeves on, never put Vaseline on. Just went out and played it. You know, like I was just a you know crazy cowboy. So it didn't. It never. It never really bothered me. Although I mean, I'm not going to say I didn't get cold, but it didn't affect the way I played. Now, I I, uh, I got a heated vest uh, here for Christmas, Baldy. I plan to wear it if it goes uh, under 50 here in, in North Texas. <laughs> Would you consider right. any technology like that under the pads in, in, a, in a year no, like this? No, I never did. I didn't do the hand warmers. I didn't do anything. I just went out there and played, you know, just fancy style of football. And uh, I just figured, like, I'm just going to let my opponent know that this stuff ain't bothering me. Mm. Maybe it's bothering you, but it's not going to bother me. In fact, I just never felt like I even got tired in that kind of weather. Like, I could just play all day. So, I mean, it was just a mindset. I hated the heat. I hated playing in the, you know, you know the, the temperatures in August and September in Dallas. Oh, jeez. Like I just melted out. I melted out there in the heat. I'd take the 30 below zero weather any day. Were you a pee your pants guy? <laughs> no. No. No, I didn't have to stay warm that way. <laughs> Some guys do that. You know, they eat yellow snow, whatever it is. Yeah. But, uh, I didn't do that. Well, you're, you're brought to us by Old Spice. I do have a couple of shower questions for you if you're open to it. Sure. Is Brian Baldinger a loofah guy? No. Uh-uh. No, I'm just soap. Soap and bare hands. That's all I need. Okay, bar uh, soap. I, I don't have wash towels or any of that other stuff inside my, my shower. 
Okay, so no loofah, no washcloth, bare hands. Um, yeah. And is that that's a bar of soap situation there? Yeah, just soap, just bar of soap. I, I, I have all these these different uh, stuff now, you know, that is, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, <laughs> uh, that you know, you can, you know, all this liquid soap and stuff. Just give me a bar Irish spring. I'm good to go. Yeah, go. but see, I was wondering, because as much as you travel on the road, does a little hotel soap give you a problem? Yeah, it does because it gets right through like yeah, I have bad yeah, fingers and yeah. it slips right through and it's on you know it's on the floor. Then you're trying to pick it up and <laughs> yeah, you know then your back goes out on you. Yeah, and you're like, exactly. Oh, yeah, here we go. We need <laughs> soap. Charles yeah. Barkley has, has lost that bar of soap uh, <laughs> inside of himself uh, allegedly. Yeah, well. Some guys have some rolls on them. You know, it could disappear. That's that's. I'm not quite in that stage. Yet. So you actually go bar to skin there. It's not just bar into yeah. the hands and then the hands go everywhere. You go bar. No, you take bar, that bar, bar everywhere. To hand, bar to hand, hand to body. That's oh, it. okay. That's all it takes. You know, my dad was in the Navy. We, we had to take these 30-second showers, 15 seconds of water, 10 seconds of soaping up, turn the shower off, soap up. Then rinse off, get out of the shower. <laughs> so he had 30 seconds to take the shower. So <laughs> I didn't have the luxury of enjoying like this hot water or anything like that. Yeah. All I know is somebody was pounding on the door if that water is running longer than 30 seconds. Okay, do you go as far wow. as to, like fr from the knees down, are, are they being scrubbed by you or are you just trusting no. that the, the water will drip down and take yeah, care of itself? Yeah, the water takes care of the feet, the lower, you know, the lower extremities. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. It's enough. So Zach Martin was saying the redeeming quality of FedEx Field was the amount of stalls that they had there. Did you run into that problem as well ever during your playing days where it's just a fight for the bathroom? Would you co-sign that FedEx Field was the best in that regard? Uh, there was, you know, I mean, some of these old stadiums, you know, RFK or whatever, mm -hmm. Cleveland Municipal, I mean, there weren't enough showers. So you literally, like, you had to make a decision. You know, if I'm going to be fourth in line, is it better just to get on the bus Stink and at least get a good seat on the bus and get some cold beers in you or take the shower. So you had like executive decisions to make. I'm going beers every time on that one, Baldy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, so if I could get four beers and, you know, take two and sneak two, uh, you know, into the case. Like I'm, I'm definitely four beers on the way home for sure. Were, were you, were you uh, playing in in the times where just cigarettes could be lit up and smoked in the locker room, or was that a little yeah, bit we after? Had, you? We had, we had ashtrays okay. on Forest Lane. We had ashtrays in the locker room. Yeah, you know, Billy Joe Dupree, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, John Fitzgerald. I mean, they were cutting sticks at halftime. They're cutting sticks. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, Billy Joe Dupree would, you know, he, he's getting his ankles taped. He's reading Wall Street Journal. And, uh, you know, he's got himself a Marlboro light in his hand. <laughs> you know, it was just pretty normal. You ever go with a heater pregame? The what? A heater? A, a heater? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's not me. No, like I mean, look, I people that smoke, they smoke, but I, mm. I wasn't, um, I wasn't doing any of that. That's that's never been me. Well, right on, sir. We've appreciated your help all season long. We'd love to keep the chatter going next week. Enjoy Wild Card Weekend. Okay, take take care, guys. Enjoy the same thing.